Shout out to one year ago I was in Dubai. The World <laughs> Cup. We got trashed by Messi, but it's okay. It's Messi. Weird. You know, you were you were about to put your Mexico jersey on. Uh huh. I was about to go put my Argentinian Argentina. jersey on. <laughs> no, no, I'm not Argentinian, but sorry, my boys, but I rep the goat Messi. It was a very beautiful, <clears throat> but I mean, the Mexico team really had none. So yeah, I was like, ah, come on, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be real, my friend. Um, but episode 004, our universe, exoplanets and black holes, you know, I find it b- before we kick off with our intro, it's, uh, it's, it's such a humbling topic to talk about our, our universe, you know, our, our, whatever is out there. It's, it puts things into a different perspective. It, we, we all share this planet and all this conflict that goes on in that's in, going in, on right now in, in our world <clears throat> that's it, going on right now it it, it sucks it sucks when you Put look it in at that it big aspect yeah when you, yeah we've talked about it and we're gonna continue saying that because it's just like yeah we just need peace and work together but sometimes poverty gets involved or or poverty or like uh the, you know rich people get involved where that's they're never it's never gonna end up good. The it's, rich will always want more, and then the poor don't have enough. So, it's unfortunate. All right, let's go ahead and kick this off. Episode zero zero four: Our Universe, Exoplanets, and Black Holes. As we're consumed by our daily life and the hardships that life often throws at us, we seem to miss an observation, an observation that we're on a spacecraft we call Earth hurtling and spinning our way through our around our sun part of a bigger unit we call our solar system together spinning our way around our galaxy part of an even bigger unit we call our milky way spinning our way across an empty cold forever expanding universe we call our known existence disclaimer we have zero credibility in relation to the universe, physics, math, and so on. So again, we're just two guys having a conversation about things that interest us. So Peter, want to kick us off? Yeah, so uh, we are going to talk about exoplanets. And <clears throat> it's something that very intrigues me because... Uh, obviously, you know, I'm a very big Star Wars fan and, you know, when you, I mean, even Man, Star Trek. a fucking nerd. <laughs> uh, and I, I just, I, the reason I started actually liking Star Wars wasn't really for the story. It was more because of the possibility of planets and different beings and just different places that can exist not saying that do exist, but can exist. I mean, everything is possible. Yeah, this is science fiction. It is a hundred percent science fiction. Uh, science fiction, but we just we close our minds to actually think that hey, we're so big, just in our galaxy that this can literally exist in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. <laughs> so it, that that's the only reason why I actually became a Star Wars fan. Not so much because of the, you know lightsabers and all that stuff, but. That's a uh, that's a pretty cool part of it, though. Yeah, it's a very cool part of it, and then you know the force or whatever. But like, it's just but that is why I actually started liking it. I didn't like it just because you know I'm a fucking nerd, but <laughs> but I liked it because I was like, whoa, whoa, this that that, that that's a that's a water world, yeah, that yeah. Can, oh, Tatooine, uh, binary star planet, what, huh? Yeah, that's a uh, one of the reasons. So I, I I fucking love movies, and you always gun me for watching movies all the fucking time. But that's ex- whatever you just dis, uh, explained is exactly why I love watching movies because you get immersed into another universe, mm-hmm. into another mm-hmm. realm, into a that good aspect. A good a good movie is gonna have you doing that. Yeah. Christopher Nolan does oh my an amazing goodness. job with Oppenheimer and uh, Inter- Interstellar. Interstellar and, and come more, up a lot, and even more. But uh, uh yeah. So <clears throat> I want to run down exoplanets because, you know, we always uh, question ourselves with, you know, are we alone? 
And this is just going to dive in into a little possibility that we can, you know, we can, it's going to be, it's scary. It's either way scary. If we're the only, you know, l- l- you know, life out there, that's scary. And if we're not, that's scary too. Cause you know, mm. we hope, uh, they don't come after us or whatever, you know? Yeah. So, uh, exoplanets, um, I kind of want to run down the timeline real quick, um, about just to give the people, it's going to be a very broad one. So NASA does a very good job on, uh, you, you can literally go on like NASA, NASA dot exoplanets.org or whatever, but it's a super, super, super good, um, uh, website that they give you probably almost all the information I got. I also got, uh, other information from some, uh, astronomers and then a professor from the royal institution so um let's get started with the timeline so uh 1990 so actually we always came to the question of uh what you know is there more planets out there are we the only ones that exist in this solar system and uh was obviously uh they would, you know, if you question that in the early days, they would get, you know, you just can't question that, you know. So that's that's kind of where, I, I don't know, where more astronomers were kind of thinking the possibility of it. But it wasn't until uh, 19, I did not write, like I said, this is mm-hmm. going to be more broad. And it was, I, I'm kind of going to uh, say more of the things that actually kind of more matter. Everything matters, but these are more like, oh, that happened that, mm-hmm. at that time. So I think it was in 1986, 1980 five seven or something like that uh they discovered or observed the first kind of light of an exoplanet like a kind of like a ring kind of type of thing and uh but it wasn't until 1992 where alexander wolfskin and dave frail discovered two planets orbiting or well, from a pulsar star which a pulsar star is uh, a star that just just exploded and they're like oh. what the fuck that's not possible but and then later on, they discovered a third one uh, in the constellation of Virgo. But uh, that's not the first exoplanet because, you know, I mean, they, they are, but they they don't consider it because it's not orbiting an actual star. Mm. So 1995, uh, Michael Mayer and Didier Kalos, astronomers, they discovered the first exoplanet uh, in uh, that is that it's called it's called 51 Pegasi. Uh, at 51 Pegasi B, they discover the first one. It's a hot Jupiter, and it orbits its star in 4.3 days. Uh, so it's a it, it's a hot Jupiter. Yeah, it's a hot Jupiter. So is is an exoplanet? Cause I thought an exoplanet is is it ro- is it a rocky planet or does it so, matter? So so the reason I'm gonna go through the timeline is to just give you a so so I have a I actually I'm gonna do it this way because I'm not gonna say what is an exoplanet first okay. i want to write down the timeline and then we're going to go back to you know what's an exoplanet and the methods they use and then also you know all right all possibilities right. of, of right. life i'll refrain yeah so 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 th- i'm just giving a, a timeline so then um so then they find this uh 51 pegasi b and then 1999 they uh it's the first transit transiting planet observed so transiting is a method that will We'll get back to it, and it's called. I even wrote it down HD two hundred nine four five eight in the constellation oh, of Pegasus, okay. and it orbits is you know uh, star in three point five days. Uh, so that was the, that. That's uh, like I said. I'm gonna come mm-hmm. back to the trans trans uh, the transit method. Um, in two thousand one, uh, the first planet was uh, ever found, or you know, in the habitable zone. It's called HD 28185B, and it's the same distance from its star as it is with us and the sun. Mm. So that was in the habitable zone, but it's it's six times bigger than Jupiter. Oh, (laughs) shit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that same team, uh, uh, they use spectrometry um, on the Hubble telescope to measure the planet's atmosphere. So that was, and it was the same team that found uh, that for, in 1999, that first transiting planet. So that same team. Um, so then we go on. So yeah, six times bigger than Jupiter. Holy bro. So, isn't it? 
I'm, I may be wrong, but I think I seen something one day uh, in Jupiter's storm. I think you can fit like a hundred Earths in there. Um, I, yeah, something you like that. You can fit like a hundred Earths in Jupiter's storm. It's it's the the red spot on Jupiter, and this exoplanet is six times bigger than Jupiter. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yep, yep, yep. And that's not. I mean, we've found. I mean, bigger ones. We. It's, that's not the biggest one. I mean, that's okay. That's just six times bigger than Jupiter. But we found way bigger ones too, and. Um, and hopefully you learn and the people learn something from this. So then, uh, in 2004, uh, while I re while I kind of just talk about it, you pull up that, pull up that, uh, photo in 2004, the first picture of an exoplanet 2M1207B was first, uh, it was first taking a photo of it. Okay. And, and then, th uh, and this is it. Yeah, that is it. So that's the star. So that's the star. This is the star. Yeah, and that's your planet. Okay, this that's little the red planet. dot is the planet. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and it, it's orbiting a brown dwarf, which is obviously in the center, and then uh, it was actually the first discovered orbiting brown dwarf. Yeah. Mm. So then this is um five times bigger than Jupiter. This exoplanet right here. Fuck. And I, I, I'm just making a spec. I'm guessing that the reason why they were it was so easy to find them is because it was it was brown dwarf. So, so when I get back to the methods, it's very hard to take pictures of them. So this was actually pretty impressive in 2004. And then uh, a brown dwarf is a star. Yeah, it's a type of star. And then it's a uh, dwarf. And it means it's dying, right, or dead, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a lot. So I dimmer. Yeah. So we can even we can actually look up uh, different type of stars. I didn't do much of stars because it's more exoplanets. I wanted to talk about more exoplanets. You know, we'll continue with this our universe and talk about stars and different types of stars. So I didn't want to, you know, focus on that. Got your boss. So that is two hundred and thirty light years away in the in constellation of Hydra. Uh, so that is actually um, two times the distance it orbits the sun. Two times the distance of from sun to Neptune. To give you a speculation, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a long ways yeah it's a long ways and that is kind of why i i really love talking about this because it's just like the possibilities of like i understand that we you know it's very hard to think that um, we're the only ones but it's like the i don't know there's a lot of possible shit out there mm -hmm. it's possible it's just possible um so so then we go that was in 2004 so in 2007 the first planets were absorbed with a uh, spectacular Copy or spec spectroscopy or something. I can't remember. I can't remember. I uh, so those were the first. Those were the first planets, and it was gas giants HD two zero nine four five eight B and HD one eight seven three three. That was some weird ass fucking <laughs> yeah. names. So uh, that was the first time in your in your studies. Did you ever find out why they have some such weird ass fucking names? Uh, no, nah, I didn't care about it. I was like, all right, whatever. Like that's. That's way above my pay grade. You know, I'm just here podcasting and trying to get this information out and not really, you know. Yeah, I got you. So, so before that, uh, so 2007, it was very a slow process. It was kind of like, you know, okay, okay, we're coming out with something, we're doing something, doing this, but it's very exponentially, it, it go, it, it rises so, so, so high. So, before that, I mean, we go back to what 1992 when we first started this. So this this in almost in our lifetime, you know, we're born 97, 99. So it's just like you know, just a few years before. So that's pretty impressive. But 2009 hits, Kepler spa uh, Space Telescope launches, and that's basically where it just it's they call it the gold rush. Uh, gold rush. Uh, yeah, basically the gold rush of exoplanets. Uh, it was the uh, telescope that stared at a patch of sky for four years, for four years, and it contained one hundred and fifty thousand stars, and uh, they f it found more than I don't know like a thousand exoplanets. So, um, and that was actually the first one. Obviously, the the first time we found a a Tatooine like uh, a planet. Uh, Kepler 16b 
it's a binary star system. So yeah. So, so uh, Tatooine planet is a planet with two stars. Yes. Yep. For those that don't oh, know yeah. Star yeah, Wars. Sorry. Uh, yeah. It's a planet with two stars. And uh, but I think it's not habitable. But they're saying that the moon could be possible. So we'll get into moons and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So that's basically the timeline. Um, I didn't want to just continue and talking about the timeline because you can literally go on NASA dot, you know, explainers dot org or whatever, and you can see the actual timelines. But be- between those times and after they were launching uh, telescopes and finding all this and doing that, Chile has a <clears throat> I love Chile, bro. We have to for sure visit one of these observatories whenever we go, but they contribute to a lot of all this stuff. And also, um, so you don't have to shoot ex- or get exoplanets from uh, a telescope in space. You can do it from the ground. It's okay. just, you know, sometimes very hard with our with our um, atmospheres, but it, it requires um, like a, 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 you not anyone can do it, you know. You don't even need a big telescope. You just need some nice, exquisite instruments mm. to dial down on a, on an exoplanet. So that is exoplanets, um, the timeline of it. Uh, and now what is an exoplanet? So I'll, you know, even read it from just NASA. You know, just, mm-hmm. you know, an exoplanet is any planet beyond our solar system. Most orbit other stars, but free floating exoplanets called rogue planets orbit the galactic center and are untethered to any star which is uh, they're just floating out there around yeah, the milky it's, it's way a, it's a rogue it's a rogue uh ro- they call it rogue planets but i like calling them nomads you can mm. also call them nomads so uh so you can actually pop up uh you can actually pop up the just so right uh go above exoplanets above exoplanets yeah and then go to that second one right there this one right here yeah and then just follow me along no no the, the other one. Oh, this one yeah that one just follow me along All just right. so just so you know just so we can, I'll, I'll, sh- I'll i'll put these up there just so we can follow on so um so there has been to this day uh, i didn't check this morning but uh today's november 26th but to this day there's been 5539 confirmed exoplanets Damn. Yeah, uh, I think on their website it says there there is uh, ten thousand more to be confirmed. So uh, yeah, <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> yeah, you can you can correct me on that one, but from uh, as of today we're shooting. Uh, there's obviously nineteen hundred Neptune like, uh, seventeen you know fifty eight gas giants, sixteen seventy five super Earths, uh, almost two hundred terrestrial, and seven unknown. I tried looking for what the unknown was, so, and I maybe like Pluto's, maybe, maybe, maybe because yeah, I didn't get too much on that, you mm-hmm. know. So I was like, you know, um, so, so super Earth is obviously we think they're like Earth, green water and stuff like that. Is uh, what a super Earth, or is it this like? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, basically, yeah. And then terrestrial is just rocky, probably like Mars. No, t- we are actually, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, in my, I, I mean, yeah, they're different, but, like, I kind of just think that they're the same, you know, just uh, a bunch of metals and, and, and rock on a planet. It just makes it high, high, uh, they're high density. So, a gas, like a gas planet is obviously low, low density, and a high planet is, you know, or sorry, not a high planet, a uh, like a rocky and metal planet is a, is high density, which okay. makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you can go on to the to the next next no to the left. No, oh. just this one. Yeah, just follow just follow those uh those lines. That, that's right. why I made those lines. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, basically this is a graph showing the planet mass. Uh, and also the orbital periods in Earth days. This is all compared to to Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh. And up there on the top, it shows the the methods it's been used. Transit. Most of the things we, most of the explanations we found is transit method. That's. Um, I'll get. I'll get to it. Okay. So it's the transit method, then radio velocity. Uh, so the people just listening, uh, just the transit is forty one hundred. Basically, uh, plan- explanations. 
the radial velocity is 1057, microlensing is only 10, imaging is 20, pulsar timing is 6, and other is 53. Again, I tried looking what other is, and maybe that's just above what I was looking for. So that is those the methods that they, you know, they found in the, the colors next to the, le you know, the legend mm -hmm. will show on the graph. So... So yeah, uh, if you want to go to the right of the the graph, yeah, the right right there. So that is Exoplanet Discoveries, you know, from 1999 or sort of from 1990 to 2000, 2010. So uh, there's been less progress, but if you could tell all, you could tell it's almost the same. They compared it. Um, Chris Empe from the Royal Institution has good. Uh, they ha he has good what's called lecture lecture about uh exoplanets and yeah uh it's basically 30 plus years of history it's almost rapid progress compared to the phone uh or even faster so it's 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 a pretty cool analogy to think about it like that you know Dang, we, we really did find a yeah. lot of them in the last 10 years yeah yeah uh, yeah so so we're living in this era that there is no way to not think about this stuff. And that's why, like I said, I mean, I'm going to keep lecturing and whatever about it, but we, you know, I, I think whether, you know, having a problem with you or anybody of the people, you know, around me, it's just kind of useless for nobody in this world to, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really humbles me and, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it's stupid shit, bro. I, stupid I, shit. I, I think the same, So you know, we're, so and and it's when you look at it in this bigger lens that obviously we can't but just imagine close your eyes and imagine and and just imagine like if you're looking at the earth from space if you're some big being looking at earth it's we're all we're all in this together oh yeah we are and it's like i said sad that so much conflict is just you know we won't get to it so anyway Go to the right one. So that's just a nice little graph about, you know, exoplanet types. Uh, so, so to, you know, like how you were asking terrestrial and super earth. So terrestrial is the earth size or smaller rock or smaller, mostly made of rock and metal. Some could possess oceans and atmosphere and perhaps other signs of, you know, mm -hmm. habitat. And then super earth is typically terrestrial. So it's kind of, see, that's why I kind of yeah. was like, it's kind of the same thing, but it's just huge. Or rocky and more massive than Earth, but lighter than Neptune. They might or might not have atmospheres. Interesting. So yeah. So yeah. so it might not even be habitable. Or I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. you just, I just like I said, we don't know. And then Neptune, like it's a similar in size in our own Neptune and Uranus, uh, with hydrogen or helium dominated atmospheres. Many Neptunes not found in our solar system are smaller than Neptune, but larger than Earth. And then gas giants are the you know the size of Saturn and Jupiter, but or much larger, like we just yeah. went through. And they include hot Jupiter's scorching planets in close orbits around their stars. So a lot of these, uh, what I've done when I did my my research, a lot of these planets were super close to their star, and it obviously makes them hot. Or oh, and so, and I think, I think when um, they get close to their star, they only are only hot on one side kind of like our moon we can mm -hmm. only see this the one side of the moon so it's the same way because it's kind of get lo it locked they're it get uh, tidally locked together yes, yes, yeah like yes, the yes, earth yes. and the moon yeah so that's what i found in with that so so um the milky way has around 100 billion planets <laughs> yeah uh just in the milky way <laughs> and um the earth like is about 10 billion Earth like just in the our galaxy, maybe more, maybe less. So So there's ten billion possibilities that there could be another species, aliens out there somewhere. Just in just in just, the Milky Way. Just, just in, in our Milky, Milky Way. Way. Just when you go outside and onto the country and then you see that. Just in that. Ten in billion that. possibilities yeah. of extra uh, and that's extraterrestrial life like with us water atmosphere carbon yes. life form it, it, it doesn't matter if it's if we just find worms on a planet yeah. that's life it they're, doesn't matter uh sometimes we consider life uh finding life as in people or uh humanoid figures but it doesn't have to be that if there was a slug 
<laughs> on yeah. another planet we're gonna study that and we're gonna yeah. want to study that and we're gonna figure out or stuff. or bacteria so so it's gonna be a cool thing that in the methods uh when i get to it um i didn't put it under the methods what i want to talk about i put it more under are we alone uh-huh. so we'll get to that so then uh an interesting thing that i wanted to um, talk about it's it's a lot of exoplanets but the j webb telescope uh will um the the system's uh, trappist one the trappist one it's a uh, seven planets with you know it's this, it's the seven planet system. okay sorry the the system trappist the, trappist one trappist one is called yeah, the yeah. okay it's it's a trappist one and i think uh i, I might have been fucking i might have been uh it's a, they just call it the trappist one system i might have that wrong so mm-hmm. you know just you know Bear with me. Uh, so it's a it's a seven planet system. Uh, you can actually pull that up right now. Uh, look at. I just want you to see the up there. Up there yeah, right there. I, I just wanted to talk about that. Look at that. In comparison Ooh. to in comparison to to Earth. Okay. So it's a little cute system. Look at that. So that's the Trappist system up top, but compared to our system, that's how it is. Oh, so it's small. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I, I'm following you. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So, a lot smaller. So it looks like, damn, that's small. Yeah, but it. What it's talking about is, uh, it's to the orbit. To the orbit. It's mm-hmm. th- they're still Earth. Like they're mm-hmm. still like the size of Earth. They're just but, like to the closer. Orbit. Yeah, they're super super closer. But it's. But since, like I said, I don't want to get too much in stars, but the smallest star is actually better to, if we were to live, like our sun is obviously perfect. I, we love our sun. I, you know, I'm grateful for our sun for every, every day, but, um, it will die out in what, 4 billion years or something like that. It'll die out, crushes, whatever. And, um, they, their life expectancy isn't as long. So, so yeah, uh. I'll get to it once I'm done, but yeah, basically that is that is uh that is the Trappist one system right now. Mm-hmm. The James Webb is uh point like pointing at it right now as we speak, and they're trying to find more information on every planet. So it's kind of I think, like I said, you can go on uh on the NASA and find out about it, and they uh I think they've the first two planets are not habitable, so that actual system can have. It can vary. The habitable zone is going to be a very most likely. It's a few of these plants are going to land within the next, I don't know, a few years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I want to see even a year or two. By the way, you know, it hasn't even been actually, yeah, it has. We're in 2023. Yeah, never mind. But we're about to be, I think, two years since we launched the James Webb. I think we launched it in 2001. Of this, I think Christmas Day, we launched it 2021. 2021, right? Yeah. I, I think so. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's almost about to be two years. Damn. And we've discovered a lot. Obviously, it's so much. Uh, you know, like I said, we'll talk about James Webb. Uh, and it, and what it gives and why. I think a lot of people are like, why don't you just stare at something new? It, you, you just can't. You yeah. got to stare at the same things we've been staring at, so we can study and see what it actually can get and cannot. So, uh, so yeah, the trap is one system. It's a pretty cool thing. So if you go, um, go out and go all the way to the left, right there. No, 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 up top. Up top. Just right there. That mm-hmm. one. That one. So that one kind of gives you the the habitable zone. Uh, it's a Goldilocks. It basically exoplanets. Uh, like us and Earth, we're in the Goldilocks, you know, zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, that just means that you're not too hot, and not too cold. You know, you can, you know, you almost could have water. And just like Earth, just basically imagine Earth. That that's basically that's basically obviously habitable. So uh, to the left, that's those are stars. Those are type of stars. And um, the, the smaller the star, the smaller the the habitable zone. Mm-hmm. But the longer the the star, you know, lives. Yeah. So like a smaller star like that would live a hundred billion years. Mm-hmm. Our star, which is a G type star. It you know its expectancy is only ten billion years, so and then you know, so yeah. So we only got like four or six billion years left. Yeah, unfortunately, on this planet, unfortunately. So I mean, 
we got a lot of time, but a little bit of time to figure out something if we want humanity. Because we do got to understand that if we were to find some, you know, a, another planet somewhere or life, you know, we're just humans. We're mm-hmm. one race. Mm-hmm. So let's fucking work together, bro. Yeah. Let's stop being all that stuff. So honestly, uh, you can even uh, go to the top. I'm I'm going to show some little nice little renderings. So you can just start at Kepler 16B. That's basically uh, these are you can find this all on NASA, but these are all illustrations from from an artist of how it would look if we went to, you know, just travel. It's basically like a travel mm-hmm. vlog or whatever. So, so yeah, just go through that. That's Kepler 16B. That's a binary star system. So, Tatooine. You know, Tatooine, you know, where your shadow always has company. So then, you know, you go to the next one. You know, this is 55 Kang, Sankri, E or whatever. Damn. It's just lava on it. It's just the ocean of lava. We ain't going there. Mm -mm. And then uh, the next one. Wow. Is this Trappist? Yes. That's Trappist. One E. So that's, I think they named the plans A, B, C, D, E. Like I said, Mm -hmm. I didn't do much digging on Trappist. I just, I'm just talking out of my ass. Imagine that. But yeah, that that would be amazing, huh? Man, just looking out and you have all these other planets. Yes. And you can fucking look at them that's fucking amazing it's super cool it'd be amazing and then kepler the next one yeah the kepler uh 18 6 f uh where the grass is always redder on the other side and that's because they just have a uh i think a red dwarf uh, star okay so you know and then then you can go to hd 40307g it's just a super earth. It's super earth Imagine the gravity on that. Thing. I know that's it's, that's amazing. And so PS one three one eight point five dash two two. Uh, that's just the planet has no star. Oh, a it's nomad. Dark. A nomad. It's a nomad. It's a nomad. It's a nomad. It's a uh, now. Can these be habitable? Probably not. No, because they don't have sun. You can't walk. They're probably cold. You'd be surprised. Really? You'd be surprised. I. This is why I put it under the ROE alone because we'll get to it. It's 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 these yeah. fascinating. Me. I didn't know this until I did some of this research. I'm like, whoa! I what the, f-? you know? Real quick, I really did not know. Real quick, before I forget, I seen uh, New Degrees Tyson talk about we associate life with our sun and every species needs life to survive. Uh, you know, plants with photosynthesis. Us, we need our our or vitamins from the sun that we get and that's not entirely true because we find life at the very depths of our ocean mm-hmm. where sun cannot get to it but they're they are alive because of the thermal heating from the from the that core. The, from the core of the mm-hmm. of our earth it's keeping them alive so yeah we uh like i said we just kind of think of life as us but life doesn't necessarily have to mean it's humans or it's us it just can literally mean fish Mm -hmm. fish a bacteria a fungi you know so it's pretty amazing so that yeah that's a planet that you know it's just a nightlife so imagine so imagine just just kind of go into your mind if you were like you know go into your mind be like hey you know i want to always I just want to, you know, party. Let's go to this planet. It's always going to be nice. <laughs> that's the whole planet, is, you know. <laughs> you know, th- and that's why it's. That's why I kind of really like the f- whole fact of Star Wars. You know, they go to this planet and they, you know, the nightlife at PSO J three one eight point five dash two two. Yeah, and uh, that that's that's. I don't know. It's just pretty cool thinking about that stuff. Like maybe there's a planet with. Uh, even the stars, they have a trash planet. Oh, they do. Yes, <laughs> you know, they have yeah. a trash planet. It's just like, yeah, I mean, that's I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah. So then, obviously, you know, go to pe- uh, fifty-one Pegasi B. That's the first exoplanet. And then, did I repeat that one? I fucking did. A couple what of a dumbass. Yeah. So yeah, that's just a nice little uh, illustration, illustrated yeah, yeah. the the depictions of it, um, of exoplanets. So. Like I said, you can find this all on NASA. They have very good information yeah, on there. Trappist one E, dude. That one. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, huh? Imagine the possibilities. It's pretty cool. So, anywho, um, I'll I'll tell you when to all pull right. some up. So, so now we're going to methods. So, 
methods to find exoplanets uh, vary. There is five ways to find a planet. There's radio velocity, transit, direct imaging, gravitational micro lensing, and astrometry. Astrometry, I think that's what, that's what it's called. So, um, radio velocity is watching for vo for wobble. Watching for wobble. Uh, how do I explain it? Uh, there was a good video explanation I saw of two of a of a guy and uh, and a kid holding hands and just going in a circle. Mm -hmm. So, the the star and the planet will wobble. It wobbles, you know, the stars doing this thing. Because a lot of people think that it's just, you know, you know, we get a very bad depiction of how our, you know, solar system goes. But we actually, you know, just, you know, our sun isn't doing, you know, we're not doing one of these things through space. We're doing, you know, one of these weird, yeah. like, yeah. things. So, so the star wobbles, and as the star wobbles, it gets pulled on something. And that's, and the, let's say the planet, just imagine the planet going like that. And it's just the, the little wobble. And the planet wobble, they can they can depict how big the planet is. So that's one way. Um, a, a thousand sixty eight planets have been discovered like that. Uh, Damn. The best method is the transit is just searching for shadows. So I'm pretty sure you've seen the graph. Let me see if I have a little graph. If we can actually pull it up. Yeah, it's above. It's above methods. Go right there to the top. That one. Yeah, that one. That mm -hmm. one. Yep. So that's a transit curve. So you we are we're, so uh, so where they came from, it's it's very hard to see them directly. So this is doing stuff indirectly. How to find a planet indirectly. So obviously we can't just look at the stuff. I mean if it's like finding, you know, they like a firefly in a stadium light. That's how hard it is to to find one of these, because sometimes they're they're small and you know these stars are big. So like if you look at the star, if, if you look at the sun, you know how how it just brightens right. Imagine trying to find a planet through that. Yeah. So, uh, translate is uh, in, uh, indirectly and it's shooting at the star and then the the starlight getting blocked by the planet, it it, it will like, you know make a little graph of oh and so so like let's just say that let's say this example mm -hmm. um as how 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 many you know how the time of that it's been blocked you can depict how big this planet is okay gotcha yeah so so that is that is um uh that's transit that is the best way to actually find one that's the most way it's 40 one well, 4132 planets have been discovered like that and then direct imaging is just obviously just taking pictures. Um, I don't know. It's pretty, like I said, that's pretty hard. And it's only 69 planets have been discovered like that. Damn. Only 69 planets. Uh, gravitational lens, uh, micro lensing is light in a gravity lens. It's kind of a crazy, it's a, it's a crazy way to do it. To be light, honest. light in a gravity lens. Yeah. The fuck is that? <laughs> so there's only 204 planets discovered. So this is one of the ones I'm like, man, I know he's going to ask me about this. And it's going to be so hard to not. Yeah. Cause uh, we can't see gravity. So what's a, what's a gravity lens? So it's uh man, honestly, I'm not, I'm not a scholar to talk about the, I, I can't depict, I can't even show you. Um, but they do have, they do have a a video about it. Should we pull up a video? Fuck it, we can pull up a video. Just go to like I said, uh, YouTube. No, just go to, or you can no, just go to NASA has a small okay. simple video, and then I'll, I'll while you look that up, uh, I'll keep talking about it because like I said, this is one of the ones that you just, I don't know, it's very I can comprehend. I was like, what the fuck? NASA.gov. NASA NASA dot exoplanet dot gov. I think you can just look up NASA explains. So then the next one is uh, astrometry, and that's just you know minuscule movements. This one's hard. This one's like for fucking I don't know. And only three planets have been discovered like this. Okay. So what you know how they do this? Oh. This is crazy. Just the closest stars. <laughs> they use the closest stars and like get the distance from that from from that. Uh, 
and with just meniscus movement, it's 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 another crazy one. And I'm like, and only like I said, three plants have been discovered. This is like some old ass shit, bro. I mean, mm. not saying that it's old, but you know, you can still do that. But yeah. Um. So go up to the what is an exoplanet? What is an exoplanet? Uh, actually, sorry. Go. Uh, maybe maybe explore. Yeah, maybe explore. Explore. No, 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 no. no. Go back. Explore, and then five ways to find a planet. This is so easy. It works so so easy. And then just go to gravity, light, and a gravity lens right here. Gravitational. Right yeah, here, just hit that. that. And it will look at this. So it'll have a. It'll have a. So that's what it is okay. right there. I'll post this. I'll post this video so everyone can watch it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't I, I i that's what i'm saying i can't describe this okay. i i it's, it it makes sense no you, you could you could have actually pretty described really? it pretty, yeah it's I, i'm it, it makes sense to what gravity is gravity the simplest way that we can that we can picture it is a bed sheet and every i'm sure everybody has watched yeah this the, uh it's, isn't it albert einstein's theory isn't it y yeah the general theory of gravity I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. but 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 we're we're on but, the same page. Yeah, but you have a you have a rubber sheet or a or a linen sheet, a blanket, and you put something heavy on it, and it makes an indent on the sheet, and you roll something across it. And that's how we can see uh, how gravity works. Yeah. So so that's uh like I said two two hundred and four planets, and we can capture these. Yeah, Th that's what we're capturing, right? Those lines. I, th I think I'm pretty sure we are, because look, look at the graph to the right of mm. how it's, you know. Yeah. So that's a crazy way. So it, if you go back, go back on that, and then I want you to hit the on astrometry. Mm, yeah, just go to astrometry, down all the way down. Okay, click that. Minutes. Look at that. Movement. It's, it's look at this. Just so that's the movement of the of the planet doing to the star, and then they just go to the nearest stars. Look at that shit. <laughs> nah, you gotta be fucking kidding me, mate. Nah, you gotta put you gotta put this. Yeah, shit I, I'll, I'll, I'll for sure put up this this stuff. What the fuck? Yeah, that's crazy, huh? Honestly, uh, <laughs> again, we're we're you know we're, we're not guys. Scholars, have, yeah, we're guys having a conversation. But boy, do does talking about this make me realize how uneducated I am? <laughs> I know in in this yeah. in this particular field, for of sure. course, for sure. So I mean, that's how it made that's how it made me feel, and I was just like, man. I'm taking up exoplanets and a <laughs> fucking guy that, you know, I do civil engineers. Like, what? The, I should have. I should have been an astronomer. You know, we should have been that, but we don't. I don't, yeah. I don't know if I'm in touch. Yeah. You know, for that. Me, me and school don't, don't, which yeah, don't look each other in the eye. Um. So yeah. Uh. Like I said, I think that's the best ways to to describe these. I mean, you can go and show. You can show uh, the other ones, but I mean, it's basically plain and simple. Um, you can you pull that up again? Or yeah. You're, no, I got it. So go go to the home page. Just literally hit that that home. Yeah, I want to see right there. Let me see. Look at that. Right there. That's that's the number we're looking for. Okay. So see. <laughs> all right. As, yeah. As of November twenty sixth, we have five thousand five hundred and thirty nine confirmed exoplanets. <laughs> 10,009 <laughs> possible candidates. 4,128 planet systems. So, my fucking goodness. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's crazy. It's, uh, I really recommend everyone to come on here and to just even hit that right there. Just hit what is an exoplanet. And then um, you can actually, yeah, eyes on exoplanet. Sorry, that one. You can hit go. Bro, it will pop up your solar system at first. You can go to, you can travel any of these stars that we found. Okay, right there, look at sun. that. That's the Milky Way. No, what do you mean? Just go in. Oh. Look, click any star. Click any, just literally any star. Let's click this one. Yeah, oh, over here. Look at that. I just want to show how how cool this is. K two three eight seven. Click to zoom. Look at that. So then go in there. Just zoom in. Boom. That's your oh, system. Yeah. That's your system. That's the star, and that's the system, and that's Damn. the. Yeah, so yeah, we're almost nine hundred light years from this. Yep. So system. if you zoom in, if you zoom in, uh, the closer we get to our solar system, and then you know we can mm -hmm. go to any one of these. Look at this fucking. Yeah, it's uh, that's this right here. 
obviously and then it actually shows you you can look at the span you can look at the plan you can look at the star mm -hmm. and then you can keep going down on there and then it will tell you all the things of that planet and uh give you very good information honestly this is a you can lose 15 20 hours just looking at all this stuff and be like whoa so oh my goodness so um yeah that the, like i said cool website they did a very phenomenal job about this and then you know they did another phenomenal job just making me feel like a piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> so so May, you gotta be fucking kidding uh, yeah uh this is this is this is a good one um so wow so like i said uh methods so we you know these are all the five methods but the reason and i won't put up the other methods in here is because it's more about kind of like life to be honest so anywho um right now nasa has uh telescopes uh, studying the universe right now they have one mm -hmm. two three four five six seven eight nine and nine telescopes right now uh just nasa this doesn't include chile and all these other places this is just nasa um so we have all those uh just studying the universe right now uh the spitzer kepler tess and hubble and james webb are more of the well-known ones um and yeah, uh, so, so like I said, you can, you can find, you can find, uh, all this stuff on NASA, but the interesting stuff, do you have any, I guess, questions on all this? Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I probably can even answer it to you if, but I'm just, I'm just, you know, bringing some kind of like little awareness and uh actually i want to you know we'll, we'll bring it we'll bring it later but that's that's basically just the methods to 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 how we find these planets and you know interesting do you do you know of any of any exoplanet that that could that that we know can inhabit life or possibly has water atmosphere uh trees greenery photosynthesis going on on the planet you, uh that's a very good question but no because i think um like i said i'm nobody to talk about this but uh photosynthesis doesn't we can't i don't think we can detect that right now mm. uh i'll get into it why put this r and are we alone and um let's get let's let's get to it let's fucking um, dive into it Fuck so it. So are we alone? That's the very most important question that we all ask ourselves, uh, whether it's for the right or for the wrong reason. Uh, we get all these UFOs and stuff, but we don't really know what that is, you know, so we can't really say that's something, you know. Correct. So it's, it fits in, in the uncharted unknown territory. Yeah. So have you heard of the Drake equation? I have. So that's basically, you know, do you got what it is? Yeah, I actually yeah. know what it is. You can actually pull it up. Yeah, it's I, right I, under. I've I've heard of it, but it's right under. I'll be alone to the left and then bottom. Right there. OK, the Drake equation right here. So that's the Drake equation. Uh, so obviously the big blue is just the stars in the Milky Way, which is about 200 billion. This is just in the Milky Way, by the way, this is just in the Milky Way. Fuck. And then. The you know the the lighter it gets the of the shade of blue and then to the white, mm -hmm. so the star you know stars with planets a hundred billion, uh, habitable, is you know twenty billion, uh, and then life evolves and then it gets into intelli you know intelligent life technology able to com you know communicate. So realistically, it can be ten billion. We we just if we want to be nice, we'll just cut it in half. <laughs> we'll cut it in half and we'll do ten billion and then we'll do a hundred million that it evolves and then it could be. 1 million that out there in the Milky Way that it's intelligent life for, you know, technology and able to communicate. 1 million, just say 1 million. This is being like super, 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 super nice. And then, or it could just be one. It could just it be us. It could just be us. We haven't found anything, so we can't say it's a million. And, and then, yeah, that makes <laughs> you know? sense. This is where you get into it. This is, Brian Green is a, very good physicist he is a non-believer he's a believer that we are by ourselves because same thing with elon musk is a believer that we're the only species because out of 
a possibility of one million that are able to communicate, we have zero evidence for anything else out there that can communicate. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where I stand on this. I think I really stand that it's very, I mean, if you, I mean, math is the universal universal language. So mm -hmm. if we even want to be nice, even if it was just two, <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be one. It mm -hmm. just even is two. I think there's a possibility for one more. Mate, this is the Drake equation based off stars in the Milky yeah. Way. The Milky Way. Just the we Milky have, Way. Yes, it's Milky Way. We have <laughs> space. Space and space time as we know it is forever expanding. Yep. Infinity. It's infinity is something that us humans cannot grasp our mind around. Which I very, so infinity yeah. galaxies, and even if this is one, and one life per galaxy, let's say that's the equation here. Yeah, <laughs> there is a possibility. <laughs> yeah, that See? there is at least one species in every single galaxy in our known universe. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if you want to just go with one, because we're the only ones in the Milky Way, mm -hmm. just that's even that. That's like so, so that's why. So that's why we, <laughs> I mean, it's very hard to comprehend that. And that's why we think about that like that. You know, that's why we, it's just so hard um, to grasp our mind. That's why, honestly, that is why I don't get why people say we're the only ones, to be honest. I understand that it's very hard to tech life. So I can kind of contrast that where I'm like, okay, you don't believe it because of all this stuff. It's hard to find, to do all this stuff. You need people to work together you need nations to work together and having conflicts with politics and stuff it literally just slows it down for humanity that's why i push on being peace and you know helping everyone else and and all this stuff and we just need people to work together and we're just dealing with stupid shit here on the fucking earth instead of trying to you know uh, thrive as one planet that we are one fucking planet we're not you know that's mm -hmm. it we're, we're one fucking planet. So, I, I, like I said, it's way above my pay grade to, to say what we have to do. But that's why it's just so hard for me to believe that we're the only ones when there is all this stuff out there. Agreed. So, um, are we alone? That's that's just uh, that's just a little a little the Drake equation. So now I want to get into. uh. Let's get into habitable worlds. So you can actually, yeah, you can actually go to the right. So habitable world, you know, habitable worlds, there's planets, moons, and nomads. So not only planets can, and I'm not going to get into this deep, deep, but not only planets can get, you know, can have life, but also moons and like Avatar, you know, obviously, have you seen Avatar? Avatar, yeah. I think they're on the moon, aren't they? I think they so. did a good, uh, James Cameron did a good uh, depiction of it. And then nomads, uh, which have you heard of nomads? By the way, not until today, or no, you've I, heard I, of them? I've, I've heard I, of them. I, I you, never did. I never did. Yeah, I, I heard never of heard them, about them. But I thought they were just empty. They're just empty, dead planets or stars just mm. going through the universe. No, with with nothing to do with just basically em emptiness. No, uh, Chris and Pay from the Royal Institution. He has a good uh, lecture, and he he talks about why uh, nomads are actually habitable mm. so so uh habitable worlds there is about i don't know this is just all in our galaxy this is and i actually kind of want you to and this is where we're gonna go into like what so so we can visualize this stuff so go to go to go down there so actually yeah keep going down so right there, that's a wandering nomad. That's like how a nomad would look. Right here. That's how a nomad would look out in space. Just Damn. imagine, imagine the skies. <laughs> imagine the clear so, skies. So actually, you know what? Let me give you some little good details about a nomad. So it's crazy. So uh, let me see. So they obviously called or from the planets. They're without no star, and so you know how they become without no star. So. Do you know? I guess no. I don't. I oh, know, so I don't. Uh, what was uh, what? My guess would be that they get thrown out of their solar system. Yeah, you know, actually, uh, the, a simulation of how our uh, solar system was formed. You know, supposedly we we're supposed to have like five terrestrial planets, 
and then just got kicked out. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Chris and Pay, like I said, I, I'm just saying. Wait. I, I know one of the theories of how we got our moon is by fishing. So we actually fished our moon oh, and where, mm-hmm. where it's at. So we, we it That's was it was a nomad at one point and then we, uh, we caught it we earth caught it in its in its orbital and that's a theory because the material found on the moon is older older, older. than yep. the material found here on earth yeah so so that's what it is and it just get so a nomad will get kicked out by it's an early phase of a solar system or whatever getting you know built and uh and yeah, it's it can anything can happen to to one of those. Like imagine they're just out there, and you know they can just get hit by something. So it, it might have a violent life. How they hmm. say it. it's not really you know, but but the the longevity of it. Uh, how do I explain it? It doesn't it doesn't uh, defer to the star so us no matter how you know how we go or how what happens to us in four billion years we're all gonna die mm-hmm. or the planet is gonna get you know shoved by our sun and not the nomad yeah I, we don't know or i don't know if they have really a depiction of how long it can just live out there technically you know uh f- until it collides yeah. or until something <laughs> yeah. collides with it so nomads could rival exoplanets in numbers <laughs> yeah yeah they can uh they're just they're literally just dark objects flowing through space so they're more like super earths mm. so the reason why it can be habitable is because it has a thick atmosphere it's bigger core and uh it has a self-contained ecosystem so uh you know it doesn't need a star to you know thrive mm-hmm. it's just bigger so it could they could you know have life and uh, I think I was trying. So when I was looking at Chris and Pay's uh, uh, lecture, he said that we haven't found any. Or, uh, it, it was very confusing. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, I don't think he mm, like how he said it. He's like, oh, we know they're out there, but we haven't found any. But it, but then he then he brought up later that they found some. It was weird. So mm. I was like, all right, let me just do some other stuff. And I think uh, what we have found is that we know about 50 to 170 nomads out there okay so but yeah it's it's honestly a pretty cool it's all it's honestly pretty cool and i'm assuming they're way harder to oh they're way 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 harder they're way harder i think they're mostly found by micro lensing i think mm. um, by, probably think just so. by, by just something by observing know. other things and then these pop up probably yeah, so uh, they're in in our in our galaxy. I think there's one to six stars. Well, I mean, we, we kind of already went to it, but one to six stars is Earth-like planets, and one to five stars is super Earth in our galaxy. So, mm-hmm. um, so let's just go. Let's just go. Yes, yeah, to the right. So that is habitable worlds. The fuck you mean? So if you just grab, it's a. You know, this is in our galaxy. Mm-hmm. If you just put some sand like that, and it's like ten to you know twenty billion in our galaxy, like that, that would be, you know, so that so that's three hundred. So that'd be like three hundred. What the fuck? Yeah, habitable in our galaxy. That's just it. It's just if you just want like kind of you know. It would just be three hundred. Yeah, yeah, basically just like you know, just like that. If you just goodness. So. And then if you go to the right, so that's in that sand pit, that's, you know, habitable worlds in, in the galaxy. So this sand pit is so, our galaxy. So, yeah. So the sand pit is our galaxy. So, that, so sorry. Sorry. I, I got it confused. I, I had it wrong. So yeah, that's 300. That's just like being, I don't know. I, don't know, I feel like nice to be honest, but uh, the habitable worlds in our galaxy, that's 10 to 20 billion in our galaxy. Fuck. So the the sand pit is our galaxy. Yeah, and if we yeah. just yeah. imprint yeah. yeah with our fingers on the sandbox and lift it up, that's three hundred worlds. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Three hundred yes. possible yes. habitable worlds. Yes. You're you're saying the very inner yeah. galaxy. How I was supposed to say that? <laughs> yeah. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Yeah. So that is that's obviously in our galaxy. You go to the right, and that's habitable worlds in in the universe, and that's you know. A thousand billion billion in the universe. So, 
and that's i don't know like a mile by like something deep or something so <laughs> yeah it's it's that number it just fucks with your head i wouldn't even know how to write that <laughs> i mean it's crazy huh i don't even know how to say that is that 10 yeah. to the 21 what no that's like uh yeah basically so it's like a thousand billion billion in the universe yeah so no, it's just gotta be I, I don't know i don't know like <laughs> i don't know you know just, this, so this is <clears throat> like Putting it into this perspective. See, that's why I wanted to put it into this perspective. Of, of sand <laughs> and our universe. And I can't, I, can, I can't already comprehend what this is. I, I can't. Yeah, my me mind, My me mind either. just can't do that. But when you put it in that, and then you translate that to what, to the skies, and it's infinite. Mm-hmm. Infinite. Forever. Yeah. How the fuck does that work? That's, oh my goodness it's maybe fucking... like i said maybe we're not supposed to you know i told you the other day i was like you know we try to find a <clears throat> life we try to find this we try to find answers but what if we like weren't aren't supposed to do that you know i mean what if we're not supposed to comprehend it it's just way above us you know we're supposed to just do what we do and ev I, evolution and that's I think, it i think for i exactly i think for a fact our species is currently not able to ever comprehend understand mm -hmm. or comprehend this but with evolution ah, here we go and ai ai and technology <laughs> so you think ai is part of our evolution are it's inevitable it's it's inevitable we we i think i think i mean of course we can keep on going and and humanity will keep on researching at the level that it does but if we want to make drastic changes i think you know what? And maybe that is maybe, AI. And maybe in and, and maybe you're not wrong because at the level we're going, it just feels like we're just having self interest from you know. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not saying that I ever was self interest, but it's just like you have self interest. Like you, you know, we have a family, and I want I want you know my closest relatives to succeed before anyone else. But that's just how human nature is, you know. Yeah. And maybe that's just is that's how it is for like people out there so self-interest i think <laughs> really does you know get involved yes in especially and maybe ai it won't do that I it was well, especially with especially with uh space exploration and all these things you know unfortunately but unfortunately the people that are making the most progress in space exploration is privately owned company uh particularly with spacex elon musk uh jeff bezos with amazon has uh blue Orion or origins. Origin, yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Virgin Mobile yeah, guy. Yeah, the Virgin uh, Mobile guy. I don't know who. He's he is he, the Virgin Mobile guy is the one that's kind of pushing more for um, space tourism. To he's more on that line, and then Elon Musk is at the top of the food chain with wanting to make bases on the moon and make bases on Mars, and then to the beyond and to the forever. But it's it's self-interest as it should they're spending their own money on their projects that they're passionate about so unfortunately it's as it should but you know where where is it going to take us you get me it's it's more along the cycle of self-interest and we want to push for this so we can so we can so we can monetize space so oh, we yeah. can go to to asteroids and mine them oh and yeah it's probably <clears throat> same thing with other planets and but, mine them yeah with the resources and shit like that yeah so i mean i don't know there's a lot so so anywho back to the are we alone i did not put this in uh methods just because uh, ways we can detect life on a planet uh, is is by you know biosignatures so that's what you know spec I fucking I have a hard time saying that spectroscopy. What <laughs> space troscopy? Yeah, spe yeah. I have, <laughs> have a hard time pronouncing that for some reason. Space troscopy. So, so that is that's the detection of biosignatures. So if you can pull up that, if you can pull up that under biosignatures, that's just how we under you know biosignatures. Let's take uh up 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 uh, next to the Drake's equation Shit. right there. That one, that first one. We're going down that line. Yeah, yeah, that one. So, like I said, I'll, I'll, pull, I'll pull this up. And 
that's just uh how we you know get uh, bio signatures and you know we can detect the amount of of things in the atmosphere you know we go okay. from f so the 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 you know the brightness is on the you know the how mm -hmm. high and then the the length is the wavelength so then you know we just do you know you can kind of just i don't want to really like go through this and you know talk about yeah. this but, well, but but we but we you know yeah yeah you guys can follow it on the picture once it gets uploaded yeah but it's just you know blue sky measures total amount of atmosphere and then it just goes to you know vegetation and oxygen and carbon dioxide and mm -hmm. methane and all that stuff so that's just um how it does it and then uh but that's about bio signatures and but, but, but before we get that it just go down that's that's how we just that's how we kind of like detect uh how we detect the you know life and we get the light from the star and then we have the instrument which it could be a telescope or whatever you know and and then we get that we get that kind of like the mm -hmm. graph yeah so the light from the star passes through a planet's atmosphere and then the light that passes through the atmosphere reaches our instrument yep. and, that's and then how we we're can able detect to. it so then we go down and then that's just basically how we can detect these graphs you know mm -hmm. light from a star and planet minus the light from the star only and it equals the light from planet only mm -hmm. so so that's how we can you know detect that and you can you can go, keep going down so then light from the planet only you know the intensity and the wavelength and then you can just you know get water or methane from from it mm. so that's that's ways to do it and actually um this before the james webb uh chris chris talks about this it's not usually done by the james webb so there's actually uh telescopes being built right now in california hawaii chile that are going to detect this stuff like a hundred percent specifically stuff, just specifically this. so james webb isn't meant for that when it was designed it was it was before this i guess when it was designed i don't i didn't like i said i'm not going to talk about james webb much but uh so james webb doesn't do do much of this but the the the, the telescopes being built right now are gonna mm. go to that now and that, that i think that's within i don't know let's fucking go 10 years so i'm gonna hurry up yeah i mean f fuck so then another method is techno signatures so this is a, a like a way where like we know something's going on on that planet and these techno signatures you can actually even go down is stuff we make on this earth okay so industrial pollutants, you know, uh -huh. stuff like that, you know, stuff that we create that doesn't exist just in a, in a, mm -hmm. you know, so that is another way that we can detect if there is life. Cause obviously like if someone's doing something, you know, radiation or something, whatever that it is not created just by a plant, it's created by us. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. And I don't think none of that is, uh, obviously we can't, I don't think we can detect that at all. So that's we can't detect this at all. I don't think so. I okay. don't think so. I don't think so. We can't or haven't. Maybe both. Okay. Maybe both. So, uh, like I said, it's just an idea. I like I said, I kind of. This is just more very very broad, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that's but that's, te but techno signatures would it be there's something there creating something. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 So that's like, Dang. oh, that's like almost certainty, mm -hmm. you know? So I think, I think another, uh, another thing that I don't know if it was oxygen or something that I might be incorrect. So on Chris's lecture, he talks about oxygen is very important because it's, it's created by things living in the planet. Mm -hmm. So that's what photosynthesis is. Yeah. isn't it something like that photosynthesis so like so after like say for example we fucking just all died let's just imagine we all just died and all life all life on this planet just died i think in a few million years i don't even know how long that you cannot detect oxygen in this planet anymore hmm. because it's you need oxygen from the from the the things living in this earth so that's another way as well um 
that you can detect that. And yeah, I mean, interesting, interesting stuff. And we are at the brink of it. We're, you know, mid young twenties, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so hopefully we live a lifetime, you know, hopefully universe and God gives us time to witness all this spectacular, uh, spectacles. And, um, so I want to read a little bit of, uh, actually, you know, what? when we, so like when we, when we sent out the James Webb, it got, obviously it gets glimpses of gases and atmospheres, you know, and earth and earth sized planets. And actually you can, I would really recommend a lot to also follow, uh, nasa and the james webb on in even on instagram they pop up with cool videos or i'm sorry not just quick pictograms of yep. of just uh of what this planet contains and why this and this and that and then there's also like you can if sometimes if you don't understand something i think a quick video on like youtube about like what it, this is it goes a long ways but like i said i don't want to get into james webb we'll get into james webb later and what it's found in these last two years and uh uh yeah it, it's i don't know it's just it's just crazy to think about uh what we can i don't know what we, what we can de depict on on the next exoplanets but what i want to leave this message on because i'm i'm basically done what i want to leave this message on is you know all this stuff is is fun and uh you know exciting to talk about and to learn but at the end of the day it doesn't fucking matter at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter because it'll take a long time. Uh, it's just gonna, it's too long way. It's very long ways to get somewhere. It's just inefficient in our lifetime. And we have to appreciate what we're living in. We have to appreciate earth. We have to appreciate that we have to take care of this earth right now. And it doesn't matter if all this stuff exist or what we can find we have to really pay attention to our earth and take care of it because that's what we're living in and that's what we're going to live in for the rest of our lives i mean unless we go to like mars but even then it's just like we're still in our own solar system mm -hmm. so so yeah uh you know voyager one and voyager two left when my mom was born like in 1970 and it's barely got to the coop coop is it coopier belt or coopler something like that mm-hmm it's barely got that. It's barely left our solar system. It hasn't even technically it hasn't, hasn't even left. Technically, it hasn't a, even left our solar system. It's in the so, Oort clouds. Yeah. So, so we got to think about it like that. It's like we don't have the technology. We don't have anything to to go, you know, anywhere. So, we have to really put this almost aside as we're learning, and understand that it's just us. It's just us. And if you can, to if you can refer to my favorite picture. I'm going to just leave it at that and then go down there. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. zoom in. Just zoom in. That is my favorite picture of all time. Right just there. Right go in. Yep. That's Carl Sagan's The Pale Blue Dot. Oh, this is it. Yeah. So that just is. we got to remember that that's what we look like when we're, I don't know, how far does it say? Uh, I'll, I'll get pull up here. This is uh, a photo taken in on Earth. February 14, 1990, by NASA's Voyager 1 at a distance of 3.7 billion miles wow. from the sun. So that's how we just look like in 3.7 billion. It's not even light years. <laughs> I don't know how, but I, I can't even do the light year, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, the calculation? Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> but but so, so that's what I want to end up, but that's what we live in. We are that small. We are that piece of grain in their finger. And if we don't look at it, things like that way, we're going to keep going and keep being in these dumb conflicts that it's like, I, I, I it just, it closes your mind. And that's why, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. That's why I, I, I really do believe in, in a higher power like God, but it just sucks that even the institutions have just kind of made it like where we have to get in conflicts all the time. Yeah. So, and so, so that's why I, I, you know, yeah, that's, 
That's, that's, that's what we live in right there. And that's our we, spacecraft yep. going through the universe. Yeah. It's, so I really want to leave with that message. And just to, you know, just be nice. Be nice. Take care of your own. Take care of your friends, people. And take care of just, humanity. Take care of just, each yeah, other. Just be, just be nice. I, you know, I used to be. I used to look at things so fucking like stupid, bro. I used to be a fucking greedy fucking. I mean, I don't think I'm soft now, but I just used to look at things so stupidly until I you look at things. You're like, that's fucking worthless. You dumb fuck. That's so worthless. So, yeah, the pill blue dot. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Let's uh <laughs> That, that's it on exoplanets that's it on exoplanets <clears throat> man i hope you liked it I fucking hope the people like it i don't I, know i i hope you learned something I le at least i learned a ton i relearned a ton it's some beautiful stuff beautiful stuff it's crazy my, my favorite thing to, i'm telling you the same thing with movies but like just using your imagination and and just what other planets might be like like that fucking tattooing looking planet mm -hmm. or that um that what's that system called the, the trappist the trappist system uh, it's what 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 would it look like if we we're standing here on earth and we had more objects in our sky i think it'd like be humbling objects. i think it'd be humbling like, i think it'd be like oh shit yeah we already have we already have one it's, it's our moon it's our beautiful moon and i started every night yeah i I, saw, I literally purposely take leaks outside just so i can <laughs> go like this <laughs> i yeah. swear i really do yeah i really really do and you just get lost at the moon you get lost at the constellations and uh, it's, it's beautiful it's humbling it's such it, just take it in and it's ah man it's such a beautiful thing um but on the other side of the spectrum of beautiful things we have things that are terrifying we have things that are <laughs> terrifying only because within that those terrifying things lies uncertainty lies unknown lies the uncharted lies lies things that we do not understand things that are against nature and things that should not exist and the things that i'm talking about are black holes black holes shouldn't exist and it was Einstein's framework is why we know black holes exist because of Einstein's framework. But even when we were like, oh, you know what? Uh, according to mathematics, black holes are a thing. Einstein was negligent about them. Even, even, oh, though, really? even though his framework ah. depicts black holes, uh, Einstein was negligent on them for years. And... I didn't get his name. Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about it. It was uh, an African-American physicist was the very first person that that thought of black holes or that named them. He called them black stars. And it wasn't until later till Einstein's framework. And there was some guy, uh, there was another physicist uh, during the, the World Wars. He was on the front lines taking shots taking shots uh taking enemy fire and as if that was not stressful enough he was thinking of black holes and thinking of the possibilities of black holes and he sent a, le a letter to einstein well mm -hmm. again he was taking enemy fire about <sighs> what would happen if this or according to your framework is this a possibility and it stumped einstein to the fact that he was negligent about them because they should not exist and what is a black hole now well, a black hole is a region in space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape it. And black holes are a consequence of gravity, a point in space where gravity has completely won. And think of it, a black hole is not an object or is not a thing like an exoplanet is or like a star is or like a solar, a solar system is. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not a thing. It's a place in time, a place in space time. And, dude, they're fucking frightening, dude. And they're frightening, but it's what every physicist or every... Oh, uh, yeah, tries it, wants to decode it or yeah, wants to figure out. Yeah. <clears throat> and 
and how now a black hole is a singularity right uh again it, it refers to a place in the universe now you've heard of newton's laws and the uh, conservation laws right yeah <clears throat> i can't re i always forget about them but yeah i know yeah we'll, we'll go over them we'll go over them later but hey black hole is a singularity where those laws the the newton's laws the conservation laws they don't work they don't matter they don't matter or at least we don't know at least we don't know but it's a place in time a place in space time where all of our fundamentals break down we there's our concept of life our concept of the universe our con our concept of <laughs> of our format it's does it breaks down it doesn't exist it it should not exist a black hole is the best definition of facts don't care about your feelings bro yeah <laughs> um a black hole is the definition of facts might not even exist in a black hole what <laughs> yeah it's crazy i'm telling you it's <laughs> fucking ridiculous what? yeah Facts might not even exist in a black hole. At least to where our mind can. This is gonna be one of those things that's gonna make me feel worthless, like like Interstellar the movie or like Interstellar the movie is gonna come up. But honestly, your talk on exoplanets already makes me feel worthless. It, it does, but yeah. Ha. <laughs> look at this. This is what a black hole would probably look like: emptiness, a void in space time, a void where nothing can escape it if you fall into this nothing can escape it and this is how we would be able to see it because the light behind a black hole would be distorted around it and this would be the only way that we would be able to see it is because the stars behind it it, it the gravity manipulates the light coming through the black hole and that would be the only way but look at that emptiness nothing uncertainty <laughs> ah, man, it makes me feel so empty but can it maybe you get to it but do they grow as they consume they do they grow yeah black holes grow as they consume and there's actually four different levels of or four different types of black holes at least what at four least, different types yeah four different four types different of, types of black holes yes <clears throat> now it refers to their mass okay and they're in uh, and, okay and it's a, a black hole's mass in relationship to um, in relation to the sun, so according to the mass of our sun, a mini black hole is less than three of our suns. A stellar mass black hole is three to fifty. A intermediate black hole is fifty to fifty thousand, and a supermassive black hole is fifty is is a uh, fifty thousand to billions the mass of our sun. But in theory, in in theory, all black holes of Every size should exist in theory. Okay. However, we only know of two types of black holes that exist, which is a supermassive black hole and a stellar mass black hole. It is the only ones that we've uh, caught on our instruments known to exist. And it's believed that a supermassive black hole lies in the center of every galaxy. We have one in <laughs> our very own galaxy. I think it's called Sag Sagittarius A is what our black hole is called. Maybe. I think. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Sagittarius so. A. And uh, is that what moves a galaxy or what? I don't know. Uh, I actually don't know. I don't know. I actually don't know. Bro, as much as. Because if, it, I, if every I, galaxy I did have a black hole in the middle, oh my fuck. Oh. Yeah, but I don't think it would have that much gravitational impact. I think it's just our clusters and how, how our. <laughs> formulation works that that's just how it goes <laughs> okay. because again remember uh we all started from one point from the big bang we all started yeah. from one point and it ex it's expanding outwards it's a violent event and mm -hmm. a, our, our galaxy which is just a cluster of matter a cluster of of stars and planets and solar systems is being thrown out and it spiraled out now do you know how black holes form nope well a black hole uh, they're created with, um, there. there's two ways that we think a black hole is created. One is when a giant star collapses and uh, when a star dies, when a super, when a big star dies, uh, it creates a supernova and the outer energy of a star is exposed and it burns off. But 
because it it's such a violent event the gravity when when a star dies off there's nothing keeping the star from because again a, a star is a bunch of nuclear reaction and explosions going on and it fights against gravity okay now when it dies and it explodes there's no there's nothing else happening causing those reactions to push against gravity so gravity completely wins and takes over the star and it and it keeps on collapsing in on itself in, in infinitely how does that work it collapses on itself infinitely and that's what creates a singularity eventually causing a black hole <laughs> and that is one of the methods that we that we have you seen trips how a uh, trip to infinity i have nice documentary i have i have i've seen it a while ago but i i can't so is it kind of the same way how they describe that if you had a box and you put a apple in there and a long time passes, it would deteriorate, 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 become into the actual atom that it was. But if you wait enough, a long time, it will become to the same thing it was. Is that kind of the same thing or no? It coral. It's not the same it, thing, it, but it correlates. Correlate. And it but correlates because... You know, of, because of the space, because it's infinite, it col- it's infinite that you get me with that word. You get me with that word because I'm like infinite, infinite is, is, is unexplainable. I feel like it's infinite. <laughs> I think we, that's more scarier than, than, than anything. Infinite. If you were to tell me what scares you, I'd be like, I don't think really that scares me because you know, I've only been alive for 25, six years. It's just like, I've been dead all this time. <laughs> we, 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 so it's like, but infinite? Mm-hmm. We we can't wrap, mm, yeah. we can't wrap our hand. It's a number that we cannot wrap our, our heads around. Now, let's see here. Now, how a black hole works is, so you can't just, you can't just, you can't just fall into this black hole. You okay. so you can't just fall into it. So how it works, let's just say um there's you know sorry, let me explain first how what a black hole kind of what the characteristics of a, of a black hole is. So you have a black hole which is a singularity okay. again a a space a place in in space time where um nothing can escape it because gravity is so strong and then you have your event horizon now your event horizon is the point of no return think of it think of it like think of it like if you fill your tub with water right Let's say you fill your your bathtub with water, completely full, and then you 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 take the drain out, and you you see how it makes a whirlpool. Okay, okay, and you yeah, I you, I, I can tell because like <clears throat> yeah yeah you see, and then if you take the drain off and you drain the water from the completely filled tub, it creates a drain pool and a drain. Okay, now that is what the black hole is. Black hole is the water draining from it. And let's say you put your rubber ducky in that in that tub, and eventually, because gravity, the rubber ducky will be will begin to be pulled into the black hole, and it doesn't just fall straight through the vortex of of emptiness through the vortex of the water. It instead circles it around, slowly, 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 until if the drain was big enough and the rubber ducky would completely fall through. Okay. through infinity essentially now the event horizon is that point of no return it's it comes to a point where the rubber ducky got so close that it's spinning around the black hole that it cannot it come cannot back. come back out of the water <clears throat> mm-hmm. it can't back to the flatter planes of the water mm-hmm. that is what the singularity is once you're at that single uh sorry that's what the event horizon is once you're at the event horizon you can no longer escape the black hole okay. and you will be completely consumed now again matter is does all theory. not no this is we okay. know that okay. we know that the black hole is this is how it is now now again once you reach that event horizon you don't just fall into it you 
rotate around it. So a black hole captures mass, captures uh, stars, planets, whatever it is. And as the stars orbit around it, it slowly starts eating it and consuming it. And there is, I think this is our closest black hole that we know of called Cygnus X1. Or Cygnus X1 is is a star and it's currently being eaten by a black, a black hole, hole? Holy as, shit. as we speak. This is an artist's rendition of, of what it would look like. Of a black hole consuming a star. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. <sighs> now, again, you have Bro. you have your black hole, which is super, super, super uh, dense. Like, there's so much matter revolving around this black hole because it's a point where it's completely... It, it's infinite. Mm -hmm. And it captures this black So this star would be rotating around it because of, because of its... The black hole's mass is a lot stronger than than the star and slowly it will slowly be consuming it jeez uh can we photo these can we shoot james webb to these what what's i mean because obviously when it consumes light it gets bright or at least we know you know how we took that photo of that uh one that one black hole first in 2014 yes the this 14? is yeah this is the very first photo of a black this is the very first and only photo that we've taken of a black, black hole. hole and this was the event horizon telescope collaboration uh they spent a tremendous amount of efforts to just get this picture and the only reason we got it is because it consumed it, so it, much it, light it is because it consumes something and we can see this as as a as a byproduct of of the energy leaking around it so uh do you know how actually they took those though do you know how they took this yes uh, if 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 anyone wants to see it, it's called uh i don't even fucking know what the fuck it's called but i'm not sure but there's a good documentary documentary on netflix uh talking about how they captured so this they so you don't really know how they because i know a little bit of how they took go ahead it. so they actually took it by so it was one of those things where uh they had to take all the almost all the telescopes that we have here on earth to point at a certain like at this and shoot it all at once and it had to be a perfect time whether the weather and all this stuff and all and it had to correlate and actually i think even in a uh, documentary they talk about how they there was some day i just they couldn't shoot it and then uh but yeah it had to take immense effort which the same way it would i speak about they had to have uh everyone working together every nation every institute whatever working together to shoot this damn thing so and that, that was one of those cools where i was like holy mm -hmm. shit you can uh, you can actually look at the little like the little flares like yeah this on you the see that that, no, I mean, I mean that, yeah, but like the the these little things, yeah, there. that no, 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 it's like a line. It's like a line. Do you see it? Kind of to the rendering. No, I don't. You don't. I'm talking about this right here. This and then that. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's almost like to the uh, to the illustration that that yes. guy. I was like, damn, that's pretty. Cool. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah, that would be the event horizon. And yeah, and that's uh, I can't remember who talks about. It. It's a good professor. He talks about how. People were like, oh, this is dumb compared to the interstellar. And then he's like, yeah, just flip it around, bro. <laughs> Same yeah. Thing. That's fucking cool. Yeah. And if let's just say. Let's just say um, let's just say you were you yourself were to fall into a black hole. It's you would be you would be spaghettified is, is what they call it. It's the scientific term that they call it. Because the gravity at your feet is different than the gravity at your head, so you would be stretched infinitely into into spaghetti. Damn, you got to feel it. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and the way we the way we detect black holes is similar to to stars. We can't directly see them. Also, indirectly, then we indirectly ah. see them. And I got a little nice little picture of how we indirectly see these little guys too. And it's the same thing the black hole would be this point and then you have objects orbiting around it but we can't see what it is if we can't see it it's, it's we if we can't see it and the objects are are orbiting around this thing it's it 
most likely leads to a black hole. Do you know why um, it's so hard to capture them? To capture a black hole? Yeah. No. So do we have any uh, where we're at? And like trying to build something to catch one or how can we catch one is it is more than infrared it's more than anything we have to, up to this day the this this little graph here shows how it, what the only method is kind of is indirectly is because of all these other things getting consumed they leak radiation like it leaks mm. radiation or like the energy it creates that event horizon going into the black hole that we are able to then measure it. And just like this, this is the only way. But as far as our instruments that we use, it's mainly ground telescopes, isn't it? I the, think so. Yeah, it's, it's uh, ground at least, telescopes. At least the one that they took for that first one was. But the James Webb wasn't, didn't exist at that time. Mm -hmm. And so scientists can't directly observe black holes with telescopes that detect X-rays and X-ray light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation. We can, however, infer the presence of black holes and study them by directing their effect on other matters nearby. So what I just explained and which is this, which is how this, which is how this photo is because of the, it was because of the other matter. Dang, that's yeah. crazy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, let's see, we're off here. That's fucking crazy, bro. Now, there is, in theory, um, again, a black hole is created by a super violent event. In theory, we could also create black holes. Humans, in theory, would have the capability of creating black holes. In relation to, um, do you know the Hydrogen Collider? Um... No. So, no. The hydrogen collider is basically oh, an enormous structure which it was uh, which borders uh Switzerland and France. It's this an enormous structure that it's it's a cylinder. Is that a what's it called sort of the C Cernus? Yes, CERN. Is that CERN? Yeah, CERN. Is CERN? Yeah, that's ah. CERN. Okay. Yeah, that's CERN and what they do is what they do is they spin particles at the speed of light or almost the speed of light and they collide them with each other okay and this is actually how we found out that there's a possibility have you heard of string theory yeah yep, yep. yeah well string theory is a possibility or a theory of everything mm -hmm. and but it works in more than one dimension which means that we're and that we exist in a plane of more than one dimension extra dimensions which would kind of make sense if everything is infinite. Yeah. I'm yep, just yep, fucking yep, weird. Yeah. And the the reason why we know about that is because they collided particles so much and but nothing can escape this hydrogen collider. Okay. But when they measured the two particles or the particles at the end, they were a lighter, which indicates that they went into something. <laughs> oh my god. It's it's <laughs> Yeah. And in a theory, if we were if we were to collide two particles on each other, that they, would, that they would collapse to even smaller. In uh -huh. theory, we could create these, uh, these small black holes. Now, Bro, we don't want to fuck with that. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> now, we even if we did, oh, it would be a good shit. thing. Okay. Now, if we did, it would what? be a good thing because nah. we could understand black holes a little bit better. But they would be so small that they would just evaporate. I'm not buying that, bro. We're not. We're gonna test that fucking thing, and actually, we're gonna swallow our own fucking world. I'm not. Te I'm not I'm well, not. let's say that was to be a thing, which is not, because they would evaporate. Yep. Which and scientists know that they would. Okay. We would need a much bigger hydrogen collider. Okay. And there is in talks to build a. Oh fuck. To build a, a future hydrogen so how collider. So how, how does which this? Which is way bigger than the current one. This is the current one right here. This one over here. This one would be a hundred kilometers for what? around. For fucking what? Because the bigger it is, the faster and the more things we can, the particles we can send through there, which would give us a understanding of, okay. oh. of these different particles. We can't just uh, have a simulation, make a simulation software. Well, simulation, let's just say simulation and quantum computing is a thing. 
quantum computing would be is how we can detect is how we would be able to learn about other stuff but it would just be theoretical we can actually test this hands-on simulations is just you know it's just theoretical so that thing that stuff that you're showing me right there uh that ring or those rings let's just go to the one that we're that we have yeah this one right how here. does it actually look like in person like is there is it an actual thing or is no how, yes there is it like yeah i didn't is it I, underground or is it above ground no it, it's under so think of it as an underground circular tunnel okay and of course you know you can have access huge. To it. Is it huge yeah, yeah it's huge do we have any pictures of it you know i didn't get them but let me pull it up real quick it's not going to take much time yeah because i uh i heard about this and you know how all those conspiracies about the cern and all that stuff but but i had never i think i'm i just never knew it was it was it was this, I guess. Yeah, this is uh, the website right here, but this is this is what it is. It's a big tunnel, and then within the tunnel, there's a little tunnel, which this is where they collide the items through. Okay. You see? And this goes for a... It's just a circular thing. Mm -hmm. It goes... Oh, fuck. Where's Who's funding track? that? Who's funding that? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Well, CERN is the organization that, okay. that does this, but I assume, you know, anybody that mm -hmm. wants to... Mm -hmm. That they're they're a joint effort for sure. Yeah, it's amazing, dude. That's crazy. And this this is how we can possibly now you're thinking you're getting scared of that we shouldn't create black holes mm -hmm. and we have the pre the we have a successor to the large hydrogen collider. There's talks of building a new one. We would need one much much bigger. And there's actually they published the paper the a guy that I'm getting most of my research from. Um, about black holes, uh, James Beckham. He's a particle physicist. He actually works at the Large Hydrogen Collider here at CERN. Oh, does he? Um, he published a paper of building a hydrogen collider that circles the moon. Oh, Again, God, the bigger go. it is, the more particles, the faster we can collide them, the more information we can know about these particles and how how everything works. And so, at what time does it? In it does it? Does the black hole? not evaporate you know at what time does it uh because you say you said they evaporate because they're so small or whatever but yes. when do we know that it doesn't uh that would that would correlate to their size of the black hole again if we do two particles that we can't even see that i'm squishing my thumbs yeah, as yeah, hard yeah, as yeah, i yeah, am yeah, yeah. but they're even yeah. infinitely smaller than that that's we would only know through the instruments we wouldn't be able to directly see it because of how small it is mm. because of the because of its mass everything goes back to mass okay why do we have these super big black holes is because the mass of a star collapses within itself so much and we there's calculations actually there's calculations which is this radius equals 2g times mass over c2 and there's calculations that we can do of, of how we could make black holes out of things. Again, a black hole is just an, a mass compacted into a certain, according to this equation. And we can make a black hole out of you. We can make a black hole out of an orange. We can make a black hole out of the earth. If we were to make a black hole out of the earth, we would need to compact the mass of the earth, the entire earth, into an object the size of a blueberry that's what would take to make a black hole out of the earth okay and according to that calculation and it's fun stuff because there's we can even there's even calculations of of <laughs> sorry dude i'm uh, sorry i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> uh, which is the there's a uh, sorry sorry so you know what? i'm getting ahead of myself let me let me go through my notes and see what what I had going on. <laughs> now you, you asked you asked a good question and it's accelerating my notes that I had in place and trying to understand what a, what a black okay. hole really is okay. and stuff like that. My bad, I'm just I'm just fuck up. No 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 keep, no, keep <laughs> it going keep it going. Now, now gravity. Now the 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 reason why black holes should not exist is because gravity in relationship to the other fundamental forces of nature 
which the other fundamental fortresses of nature is uh fuck me man i fucking forgot it the other fundamental forces of 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 nature is oops sorry are um it's the strong force strong force is the is the strongest fundamental force of nature and then you would have electromagnetic force and then weak force and then gravity okay now why black holes shouldn't exist is because gravity is the weakest of all the fundamental forces of nature it's kind of weird because gravity keeps everything in place gravity works across the entire plane of the universe which the universe is infinite and it's the weakest force out of all the fundamental natures and that's why it, they shouldn't exist because it's a point where gravity won and it it again it's a singularity it's where our fundamental knowledge of nature of how the universe works it collapsed and we have a point in space time where gravity is the strongest thing there gravity is what caused this thing that shouldn't exist and we think that this is and we think that the only reason that gravity appears as the weakest fundamental force is because it leaks into other dimensions and mm. instead of us living on our one on our three-dimensional plane for sure there's more dimensions there's more dimensionals more 13 13 possible dimensions do we know according to string theory we know of at least 14. Oh, 14 yeah 13 or 14 you might be right according to string theory but this is why because gravity not only works on our dimension it works across multiple dimensions gravity's fucking crazy too though <laughs> and this is and it's also theorized that a black hole could possibly be a doorway towards one of these other dimensions. Mm. Mm. Now, be now, now I said that everything breaks down in a black hole and that is in theory. And theory is the highest plausible explanation in science, be in science. So, if you come up with a theory in science and the math checks out with science, then you have a credible theory. Correct. The only thing bigger than that is scientific law, which in its simplest terms, a law predicts what happens while a theory proposes why. Oh. And scientific law is, uh, you know, Newton's first, second and third laws of motion um newton's law of universal of universal gravitations and then you have the laws of conservation now let me let me re, re remind you what the laws of conservation of mass are because or why the con uh, conservational laws are so important because these are laws that correlate across everything that is known and the law of conservation of mass is the law of conservation of mass states that in a chemical reaction mass is neither created nor destroyed for example the carbon atom in a coal becomes carbon dioxide when it's burned the carbon atom changes from a solid structure to a gas but it does not change, change. yeah you get me yeah, yeah so nothing can be lost forever nothing is truly ever oh lost my God. now oh my God. the law of conversation of of conservation of energy is the law of which is the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed only converted from one energy to another so what okay. i just explained okay. Okay. nothing can truly be ever lost and in a black hole if we were to ever have the capability to even go to one uh -huh. let alone have the instruments to detect one to and detect one. one and to see a black hole everything that has ever gone through a black hole in theory if we had the technology available to us we could we could 
re-engineer what what has been lost in a black hole to oh then find the things that fell in a black hole. God. I think we don't we <sighs> you're fucking with mine here. Yeah. And so what do we uh, what do, I don't know. No. Yeah, and the black hole that was consuming uh Cygnus, I believe is what that's the closest one that we have currently observed. But there is a small possibility that we could have a black hole in our solar system the size of an apple in our solar system. I heard of that one before. And this is in relationship to, have you heard of the Planet Nine theory? Yeah, uh, Planet Nine. Yeah, there is there is a um, asteroid belt system past um, Neptune, I believe. And we have all these anomalies going on over there. There is all these asteroids not not acting how they should. Mm -hmm. And I think there's even one asteroid that is going the complete opposite way of everything else in the solar system. And in back then, this is actually what, what, you know, um, conspiracy theorists think, uh, Nibiru is with the Anunnaki. Mm -hmm. They think Mm -hmm. that the planet is somewhere out there in the solar system. Um, and then in more scientific terms, we thought that there was a planet nine, but now there could possibly be the, a super small black hole out in our in our universe, which again we have never detected or have, um, or have direct contact with a mm-hmm. s- with a miniature black hole because in theory they only exist, but we haven't found them, and we think that those were created from the mini ones from the Big Bang because of all these violent events going on, okay. and they just scattered out, and they happened to fall in our solar system. Now, that's only a theory, and it's just something fun to think about and something fun to mention. But there is a theory that we could very be, well, that we could very well be in a black hole, that our universe could exist within a black hole. Because it turns out that if a black hole is massive enough, we would be okay. We wouldn't turn into spaghetti. It would be so massive that we would be that we would be so <laughs> insignificant to the mass of the black hole that we would actually be intact. And instead of being spaghettified into a black hole, we could just enter another universe. And it could be that our universe resides within the walls of a super massive black hole that is our universe. Because keep in mind, what we obs- what our observational, the observable universe, we can never see beyond it. We see this horizon, we see this line, but we know there's things beyond that. And it's forever expanding into infinity, into beyond, which is crazy to think about that from the start of the Big Bang, the universe is expanding into what? What? Yeah. <laughs> and this theory or hypothesis is fun to talk about because how does a black hole work? The things that fall into it are make the black hole bigger. So let's say we were to fall into a black hole and we were to observe that horizon that our observable universe Oh, and we're forever expanding I get what you're going like now. a black hole forever consumes, mm-hmm. getting bigger and bigger every time. Our Big Bang Theory is, is almost identical to our universe uh, and our black hole hypothesis or theory. Now I understand that. See, so I've heard about the black hole theory. We might be in it, but I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you kind of clarified that. This was thanks to James Beckin, the particle physicist. Oh, really? In the Large Hadron Collider. Shit. He created a beautiful fucking lecture with again the Royal Institution. Have he has he uh, has he been on any like podcast or any of you know? I don't know all the. I, I've only seen him on on that lecture. Okay, huh? And now, Fuck. why now? Ho, hold on, to me now. Why? How could that even work? How could the universe be in a black hole? Okay, remember me saying that if we compact the Earth. Into, to, into a blueberry, blueberry yeah. into a blueberry we can we can make a black hole well 
Turns out that if we gather all the matter in our universe, everything that we know, dark matter, uh, particles, nebulas, galaxies, our planets, if we gather everything, which scientists can approximate uh, a number big enough that we can, that we can, that we can map the entire universe and an estimation of all the mass. Mm -hmm. And if we were to make a black hole out of everything that exists, it turns out that we need something bigger. We can't, instead of compacting everything, it needs to be bigger. Huh? Yeah. This is what the fuck. This is why. This is why the black, the universe in the black hole is is even talked about, or is even, or it can't be ruled out at least, is because instead of co compacting something so small, yeah, we actually need something bigger. <laughs> this would be our observable universe, yeah. and this is what we would need in order to create a black hole out of it. So, are we in a black hole? And could it be? Is that why? Is that where the multi? And could it be <laughs> that we are in a black hole, and the black holes in our universe lead to other universes? And could it be that the black holes in those other universes lead into other universes forever, infinitely, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever? This oh also has relationship to the, for this, shit. this also has a relationship towards string theory, which string theory is a theory that I can try to understand, but I am just simply <laughs> not smart enough to understand it. But in relationship, it's a theory of, for everything it, and everything fits within the string theory. It's still being worked on. It's just a theory. Is it Michio Kaku started it? Michio Kaku, Brian Greene are the the head the head least, ones or at least the most popular ones the ones that are very vocal about them they've been working on this for over 10 years that's crazy and string theory works and we find that that the calculations in string theory in our dimension they're a little iffy and they don't really work out but at four five six ten dimensions these calculations work which I'm not smart enough to do these calculations myself, but all these smart people are. And if anybody is smart enough, their calculations are out there. You can just look them up. It's same thing with with this black hole. And if we collapse the entire universe, we actually need something bigger than the universe mm -hmm. instead of smaller to make a black hole. That's the calculation right there that you guys can do the math like yourselves. Does it? Okay, so I understand that whole black hole, but wouldn't it not work since it consumes all light? But not, no, mm. a black hole consumes matter. It consumes everything, okay. and nothing can escape it. Which means we can't escape it. We live in it, <laughs> and as our you as our Big Bang theory keeps on expanding forever, which the Big Bang which has did you know not they slowed that? down. They push that. Yeah, from 13 er, a, billion to 20-something billion yeah. years now, which it's forever expanding, and it's actually expanding faster than the speed of light, and it's actually expanding faster than what we originally thought. It This Big Bang Theory is is, is, you, is similar to this. It, it's forever expanding. You know what's a scary thought? A scary thought is that, uh, I mean, all this shit is fucking terrifying, but the most terrifying thing is that in a few million years or whatever i don't know how much i think i've seen this i think it's it's gonna happen we're just gonna get so far from everything that we're not even gonna see stars yes. in the sky yes. that is like oh my god oh, i i'm thankful i'm gonna be dead but mm -hmm. right now i kind of feel comfortable looking up okay you know there's there's, there's stars <laughs> in theory if our universe continues to expand, we're going to get to a point not only that where everything's so far from each other, but everything just dies out because of how yes. infinite everything is. So if we could capture what the end of time would be, it would be our universe completely dark. Completely so dark. since 
and empty and cold and dead. Infinity, though. Like I said. But then at that point, we just, it's just a long time and we just wait until another big bang. This is why <laughs> the universe and a black hole theory is so excited to talk about because how did the big bang start? Do you remember? Just two atoms sliding and boom. And there was, first there was nothing. F first there was nothing. There was just matter. There was just violence. There was just matter. And then everything compacted so small into one point. Sound familiar? Everything yeah. compacted so small into one point that it created a violent reaction and it exploded. And that's how we got the Big Bang. Same thing to how we get black holes. Everything collapses on itself so mm. infinitely that it expands, that it creates something where where we we don't understand what the universe is expanding into, and we also don't understand what is in a black hole. Well, there's no way to know it. Even if we were to go inside on a black hole, there's no way to send information out from it because nothing can escape it. <sighs> Dang, that's... <laughs> what the fuck you do? Damn. <laughs> because I was going to ignore that, but now I can't. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I... <sighs> man. Ah, man. We simply, and it can be, it goes back to humans are not smart enough to understand what goes in what every, what goes on in a black hole maybe we're just not meant to know from it maybe there is a creator which to See, what we know our universe is of intelligent design everything in our universe is exactly as it should be if it, if it, if if gravity was just a little weaker or just a little stronger the big bang if it was just a little stronger the big bang wouldn't have happened or we wouldn't be expanding mm -hmm. or and if it was leaker or weaker it, it would just be scattered all over the place i just can't think of a i, I just can't <laughs> wrap around myself where it's infinite because i like that oh hey this is a wall this after this wall okay you know we go you know to the house oh after this we can go outside oh after uh i can leave these borders of the state i can go to the rest of the country after the country this and that after space there's you're sorry after the planet space and so on and so on and so on that's, that's okay you know at least i can go in somewhere but what is infinite and that's what fucking is yes. terrifying and there's no barrier this this black hole this universe in the black hole theory is easier to comprehend than the big bang theory because as we know everything is infinite and if and if our black hole leads to another universe and so on and so on and so on and our observable universe is what it seems and which we would never know we would never we can't see beyond the horizon we can't see beyond the event horizon and we can't see beyond the observable universe it's easier to comprehend that everything just keeps on going forever than it is the Big Bang Theory that it's expanding into nothing, nothing or something or it's cre I, it's I'll tell you what it's a mind fucking to say the least uh, yeah I uh I'm glad oh, I mean okay I'm not and I if we can communicate with these other universes with these other dimensions what would happen when we step into them? What if they're not carbon-based universes? What if they're completely something different? What if our instruments, what if we have an instrument that can detect a human presence? If we bring this instrument or if it's made out of, if it's, if this, if this instrument is made out of, you know, elements that are in accordance and in law with our universe, if we bring these instruments and ourselves into these other universes, what would happen to them if matter, if that particular metals or matters or carbon doesn't exist in that universe? Would it just disappear into nothing? It's, it's unbelievable to imagine 
what could yeah. be the positive? Can we even communicate with these other universes if they exist, which according to the mathematics, more than one universe exists? Or could it be that there's these, these bubbles of universes if this theory is is proven to be wrong? It, are we in a bubble of universe and what we call universe, there's actually more than one universe a scattered multiverse, around? A multiverse. Which is where the string theory plays in part, which is what the string theory says. And the math checks out. I'm too dumb to understand the math. Me too. But the math is the language of the gods. The math correlates across all space, all time, and anywhere in any dimension, one plus one is always going to be two. It's unbelievable. It's humbling. It's humbling when you put these things into perspective. This theory is humbling. Space is humbling. Black holes are humbling. <laughs> as as human beings were hu human beings are arrogant. Our species we're an arrogant species. We try to understand everything to our best of knowledge, and we try to explain everything. But a black hole, a singularity, is is our is where we're completely vulnerable we don't have and not even an idea of what could possibly be there's only what is it's humbling when you even look at all these things and when you put everything into perspective of the possibility of more than one universe of our universe in a black hole and the black holes in our in our universe go into other ones. You have to appreciate that in an infinite reality, in a reality where it goes on forever, forever, forever. We're here on the time of this recording, Sunday, November twenty six. It's currently two p.m. We're here having a conversation you guys are listening maybe you're working you're working out we have our families we have we have our pets we have our dogs we have our children and in a universe that's infinite we get to be in it we get to have our moment we get to live our life we get to experience life in our in our perspective whether our perspective exists in other realities or not is to say the least, and it doesn't matter, as you stated earlier. We have, we play a very small part in an infinite reality. And we should cherish it. We should take care of it. We should be happy that we, we are here. We are, you know, we have hardships and these hardships suck and sometimes life sucks and that's the reality of, but, but we, exist when at the perfect time almost we we exist when when it looks like nothing else does and it it is such a beautiful thing are we special most likely not but what is is that we're here now and that yeah so uh i like what you said there and that is what brings me to really i think love is the powerfulest thing in this world love because if without love i feel like you are lost you know you don't have any love for this you don't have love for that you don't give a fuck about that you would rather die that's not what you want a state of mind that you want to be in and that's another thing why i feel like um why i do believe in in god you know do i believe in institution no but i believe in god because god makes me feel warm mm. makes me feel like you know there is a purpose and makes me feel like i don't give a i don't have to give a fuck about a black hole or a fucking universe it's like he can take care of me yeah. but you know that's why i think faith is important as well as understanding all this though yeah you know i <laughs> um Again, we grew up Catholic and whatever our religious experiences are, you know, that's for another conversation. But I am a man from a broken faith. Uh, again, I was very into religion 
and then I got out of it and I'm in limbo now. But the universe and diving into it and studying it actually, instead of what one think is, you know, you study this universe and you see that there's nothing out there and that there's it's infinite to what would be that there is no God, it works the opposite for me. I actually think that there's definitely a creator that of intelligent design that designed the universe that designs all these things and and i agree i i agree um is maybe maybe there is someone out there maybe there is someone out there and i think it, they 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 serve a, they definitely do serve a very important role definitely do in the ever expanding universe yeah i i don't know it's a lot to think about it's crazy i'm telling you this this topic humbles me this topic puts me on my knees because it's it i i feel like i just have a greater love for everything that exists oh yeah when you put all this into perspective like this is our observable universe and there's there could be more than one observable universes there could be and then if these observable universe what are they housed in is, i don't i truly do i truly don't know and nobody does and could very well be that nobody will ever understand but to what you said it doesn't matter we're here now yep we're here now you know it's let's Gonna live accordingly and yeah live peacefully and share love yeah you got anything else to share i do not i do not i just i just want to be a messenger of this uh i just want to kind of like you know the best thing out there is peace and love <laughs> Not no hippie shit. I'm not. I'm not nowhere close to no hippie <laughs> shit, bro. But it is. But also, don't be stupid. You know. Yeah. You know. Well, so, guys, that's it. Wraps for, it up. That wraps it up for us today. Remember, in an infinite universe, you are here. In a reality that will forever be and expand into foreverness. We're here. Let's 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 enjoy it. Let's enjoy it. And whenever you want to humble yourselves, look up pale blue dot. Put it on your screen saver. If you feel angry, if you feel some sort of way, just look at it and be like, "Oh fuck, I'm there." Yeah, it's not fucking worth it. It's yes, not stupid. All right. All righty. Intellect is out. Thank you guys very Thank much. You. Good. 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 On good. to the next. Peace. Thank you.